Have you ever watched an actor prepare for a role? The meticulous detail, the character immersion, the rehearsal, feedback and fine-tuning. It's a masterclass in creation and refinement. So why can't writers adopt the same method? In this episode, I'm going to explore my new innovative approach to editing a novel, one that draws inspiration from the world of theatre. Now, you might wonder how the process of preparing for a role could possibly relate to the task of refining a manuscript, but the parallels are surprisingly rich and insightful. I'll guide you through seven comprehensive steps, from character analysis and script analysis, all the way through to the final dress rehearsal. Each step borrows from an actor's approach to preparation, adapted to the needs of a writer polishing their novel. So whether you're a seasoned writer or a fresh-faced newcomer, these steps will help breathe new life into your editing process, ensuring your final manuscript is ready to take the stage and captivate its audience. Hello, I'm Stuart Wakefield, an author accelerator, certified book coach and writer. With 26 years in theatre, broadcast media and coaching under my belt, I know what makes stories work. And I love to share that with other writers because the world of storytelling, it's like the ocean. It's deep, it's mysterious, and it's a little bit scary to those who don't know how to navigate it. And with so much left to luck and timing, it's my mission to give great books the best chance of getting into readers' hands. In each episode, I'll share tips and plans of action that will help you write, edit and publish your book. And if you're new to writing or consciously working to improve your craft, then this is the podcast for you. So, without further ado, let's raise the curtain on this actor's approach to novel editing. This unique method consists of seven steps, much like the path an actor might take. Number one. Character study. Like an actor diving into the psychology and backstory of their character, you should do the same for all your major characters. Explore each character's motives, desires and fears in depth, even creating a detailed character biography if necessary. This understanding will allow you to ensure that every action and line of dialogue is consistent with their personality and past. Number two. Scene breakdown. Actors often break down their scripts into individual scenes to study them more closely. You can do the same by breaking your novel down into its component scenes and chapters. Evaluate the purpose of each scene and whether it moves the plot forward or develops the character. Then cut or rewrite scenes that don't add value. 3. Rehearsal Just as actors rehearse their lines to understand the flow and rhythm of the dialogue, you should read your novel aloud. This will help you catch any awkward phrasing, overused words or clunky dialogue that you might have missed when reading silently. Number four, blocking. In theatre, blocking is the practice of planning out the physical movements of characters. For your novel, consider the physical space where your scenes take place. Are the settings clearly described? Are the movements of the characters logical and easy to follow? Enhance or revise the scenes as needed. 5. Improvisation. Actors often use improvisation to explore their characters in the scene more deeply. You can do the same by writing improv scenes. They're not intended for the final draft, but they might help you discover new aspects about your characters or plot, and you might even come up with a new scene that does actually make the final cut. 6. Feedback. Actors don't work in isolation. They constantly receive feedback from their director and their fellow actors, and you can benefit from a similar feedback loop. Have a trusted friend, writing partner, or ideally a book coach, a professional editor, read your novel and provide constructive criticism. Be open to their suggestions and willing to make changes based on their insights. 7. Polish performance. Actors continually refine their performance until it's ready for an audience. Likewise, you should be prepared to revise your novel multiple times until it's the best it can be. Even when you think it's finished, let it sit for a while, then come back to it with fresh eyes and revise again. 
Let's delve a little deeper into step one, the character study. In a character study, you're aiming to get into the mind of your character, much like an actor immerses themselves in the role they're preparing to play. This deep understanding will allow you to create a character that's consistent, believable, and engaging. Number one, backstory. Create a backstory for each major character. This doesn't need it to be included explicitly in the novel, but it can help inform your understanding of the character. What was their childhood like? What kind of family do they come from? What major events shaped their life? What are their past traumas, victories, disappointments and achievements? Number two, personality and motivations. Understand each character's personality traits, beliefs, values and motivation. What drives them to act the way they do? Are they acting out of love, fear, ambition, revenge or some other motive? Number three, goals. Clearly define what your character wants. This can be a tangible goal, like finding a hidden treasure, or an intangible one, like seeking approval or love. The character's goal can drive the narrative and cause conflict when it clashes with the goals of other characters. Number four, strengths and weaknesses. Every character should have strengths and weaknesses. A character's strength can help them overcome challenges, while their weaknesses can create hurdles and conflicts. How do these strengths and weaknesses affect their journey? Number five, growth and change. How does the character evolve throughout the story? Good characters often experience some kind of growth or change over the course of a novel, and understanding this art can help make the character more dynamic and interesting. Number six, character relationships. How does your character interact with others? Understanding these relationships can shed light on the character's personality and motivations. For example, a character might act differently around their boss than they do around their friends or family. Number seven, visualize. Lastly, try to visualize your character. How do they look, speak, move, dress, and so on? This can help you write more vivid and engaging descriptions. By conducting a thorough character study, you can create characters that feel real to the reader and drive your story forward in a believable way. Let's look further into step two, the scene breakdown. Scene breakdowns are critical for understanding the components of your story at a granular level. Each scene in your novel should serve a purpose, propelling the narrative forward, developing the characters, or ideally doing both. So here's how to perform a thorough scene breakdown. Number one, scene identification. Begin by identifying every individual scene in your novel. These may align with your chapters, or there may be several scenes within a chapter. Each scene typically involves a change in location, time, or focus on different characters. Number two, purpose identification. Determine the purpose of each scene. Is it to advance the plot, develop a character, create tension, foreshadow an event? Every scene should contribute meaningfully to your novel in some way. Number three, character analysis. Examine the character's presence in each scene and their roles within it. Are their actions and dialogue in line with their established character traits and motivations? Are they behaving in a way that's consistent with the personalities you've developed for them? Number four, Plot progression. Look at how each scene advances the plot. Does it lead logically into the next scene? Are there any jumps in time or logic that are confusing or need to be better explained? Are there any loose ends that need to be tied up? Number five, conflict and resolution. Identify the conflicts and resolutions in each scene. Conflicts drive the story forward and keep the reader engaged, and every conflict should eventually lead to some kind of resolution, even if that doesn't occur till later in the novel. Number six, emotional dynamics. Consider the emotional dynamics of each scene. What emotions are the characters experiencing, and how do these emotions affect their actions and the course of the scene? This can also help to assess pacing and to ensure that there's an appropriate variety of emotional tones throughout your novel. Number seven, imagery and symbolism. Analyze the use of imagery and symbolism in each scene. How do these elements contribute to the overall mood, theme and deeper meaning of the scene and the story as a whole? Number eight, 
Scene Revision. Based on your analysis, revise each scene as needed. This might involve cutting unnecessary scenes, adding new scenes, or reworking existing scenes to make them more effective. A thorough scene breakdown can help you see your novel in a new light and identify any areas that need improvement. This step is crucial for making your story as strong and engaging as possible. Here's a more detailed explanation of step three, the rehearsal. So much like actors rehearsing lines to understand the flow and rhythm of the dialogue, reading your work aloud is a powerful tool for novel editing. It can help you identify awkward phrasing, overused words or clunky dialogue that might have been missed while reading silently. Here's how to get the most out of this step. Number one, read aloud. So start by simply reading your work aloud. Pay attention to the rhythm and the flow of the words. Does the dialogue sound natural? Does the prose have a pleasant rhythm or do you find yourself stumbling over certain phrases? Number two, record and playback. Consider recording yourself reading the novel. You can play it back, effectively allowing you to become the listener. And this can provide a new perspective on how the words flow together and can also make any issues with dialogue or prose more apparent. Number three, identify issues and listen carefully for issues. These could be sentences that are too long or convoluted, dialogue that doesn't sound quite right or overused words and phrases. Number four, Test different voices. If your novel includes dialogue, try giving each character a distinct voice when you read their lines, and this can help you determine if their dialogue fits their character. Would this character really say things in this way? Number five, check pacing. Reading aloud can also help you assess the pacing of your story. Does the story flow at good speed, or are there sections that drag or feel rushed? Six, check for consistency. As you read, check that character, voices and narrative styles are consistent throughout. Seven, revise. Use your findings from reading aloud to revise your work. Rewrite awkward sentences, replace those overused words and make other changes as necessary to improve the flow and readability of your novel. Remember, this process is like an actor's rehearsal. It's not about getting it perfect the first time, but about exploring, discovering and refining. It's a powerful tool in your editing process, providing a different perspective on your work and enabling you to polish your prose to a shine. Before I wrap up, I invite you to do all the usual stuff. You know the drill. Like, review, share and subscribe. But better than all of that, come and visit me at thebookcoach.co. You can sign up for my free self-editing guide and take a look at the services I provide. But there's tons, and I mean tons, of free useful stuff on my blog too. As we close this act of this episode, remember that the journey of a writer, like that of an actor, is one of continuous growth and learning. Just as actors continually refine their craft, so too should we, as writers, strive to improve our work with every draft. So this unique approach we've explored today, it draws parallels between an actor's preparation for a role and the editing process of a novel. And I'm encouraging exploration attention to detail, creativity and critical feedback, all the while keeping the heart and soul of your narrative intact. So next episode, we'll take a look at blocking, improvisation, feedback and polishing the performance. And that's not all. I'm writing a comprehensive book that supports this method. So treat this as your first taster. Thank you for listening to today's episode. Um, I'm conscious there are a lot of podcasts out there and I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to listen to mine. But also, well done for investing some time in your own writing life. And yes, this podcast is about writing, but I'm here for you, not just your stories.